morning I'm very pleased to spend some time with the population though be it virtually I'd rather be on the ground to go through some finer details of budget 2022 and to discuss those details so you can understand how the budget in a comprehensive and a holistic manner addresses your day-to-day -day living and addresses the issues of national prosperity, job creation, <clears throat> creating opportunities, expanding our economy, building capacity and enhancing the productive sector of our country. Budget 2022 is not only people-centered, but is geared at addressing our productive capacity of our country and every single sector. The productive capacity includes not only the hardcore infrastructure, not only the investment in the sectors, but importantly, the investment in the human resources that would give us the capability and the potential to develop these sectors. So unless we enhance our productive sector, our productive capacity, we cannot build a strong economy. We cannot talk about local content. We cannot talk about expanding the economy. We cannot talk about making sectors more competitive if we do not enhance the productive capacity. This basically is putting systems, giving incentives to increase production, reduce the cost of operation, improve efficiency, and have higher yields, for example, in agriculture. So these are some of the important attributes of Budget 2022. It is laying the ground, laying the foundation, establishing the framework through which the development and expansion of our country will take place. So we cannot understand the full context of Budget 2022 if we dissect what is happening in 2022 from the macro agenda the long-term and medium-term plans and vision of the government. <clears throat> and that plan and vision is well established in the manifesto. Another point I want to make is that we cannot look 
at Budget 2022 without understanding the context in which the budget is framed. And that is why the Minister of Finance spent so much time going through the challenges surrounding the global economy, the challenges surrounding the regional economy, and where Guyana fits into these challenges with the continued pandemic, and how despite these challenges, we are chartering a way that is second to none, really. We are chartering a way that is second to none in bringing value, improving welfare, enhancing livelihood, <clears throat> and creating policies and programs that are impactful in nature. So one must also look at what is going uh, on in the region. One must look at what is going on internationally. And then you will understand the context in which Budget 2022 is presented. Now let us look, for example, at, at an area of agriculture and food security. We have been speaking at length about our plans in making Guyana not only an agricultural hub, but a food production destination, <clears throat> ensuring that our future economy is built on a strong foundation of food security, but more importantly, allowing our country to become a net exporter of food. To do this, it requires a couple of things. It requires investment, it requires transformation, it requires institutional support, it requires training. Now, <clears throat> this initiative is structured in the CARICOM, the CARICOM objective, and that is to reduce our food import bill, our extra regional import bill, by 25% by 2025. That means a whole new education program so that people in the region will use more locally produced food within the region itself. Removing of trade barriers, establishing a strong bilateral relationship, enhancing production, increasing productive productivity, ensuring that our agro-processing facility is transformed into meeting international standards. Now, <clears throat> all of this, when we speak about the agricultural sector, is moving food production, agriculture, from food, from food production and agriculture as we know it traditionally, into agribusiness, into an agri-system that supports agribusiness development. All of this is geared towards transforming the sector, making it more competitive and diversified investing in a, in, in a way that the sector become resilient. We know how susceptible the sector is to climate change. We know how susceptible the sector is to, to flood. So we have to take these things into consideration when we develop a <clears throat> food security strategy. And in that strategy, we must build in resilience. We must have our crops, we must have crops that are more resilient. We must use technology. That is why we're talking so much about shared houses, not only to ramp up production, but importantly, to build an infrastructure that gives us some amount of resilience against the shocks of climate change <clears throat> that we have to face, that we have to face. So agriculture is being developed uh, using technology, and importantly, in a manner in which we can attract new entrants new investors, attract young people into the sector so that they can be part of the growth and development of this future mainstay of our economy. <clears throat> let us examine, and let me say this, let me say this. The investment that we are making now in these sectors, the yield, or, 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 or you will see the, the full benefits or the full return <clears throat> two to three years down the road. That is why Budget 2022 is so critical, because it lays the foundation for medium and long-term initiatives that will bring in return down the road. <clears throat> that will, you will see the full opportunity, but it's ramping up, it's gearing up, it's moving in a direction, it's putting things in place to get us into that direction. So <clears throat> if we look at some of the subsectors in agriculture, and I'll just take a few examples. Look at sugar, for example. Now, we have allocated $6 billion to support Gaisuku's ongoing investment in field and factory. 
What does this do to the ordinary people? What does this do to communities? <clears throat> How is this linked to your life? Well, you know, the transfer of this $6 billion would be directly supporting thousands of jobs, directly and indirectly supporting tens of thousands of jobs for tens of thousands of families. That is what is important. It's not only the investment, how it is linked to supporting an industry that creates jobs, that sustains jobs. <clears throat> but importantly, importantly, these are jobs that were not there prior to August 2nd, 2020. These were jobs that were taken away between 2015 and August 2nd, 2020. These are jobs that were returned. These are sustaining communities, enhancing communities. Sometimes we forget this. So this investment is beyond sugar. It enhances the livelihood of persons employed at Gaisuku, and it stimulates economic activities in surrounding uh, communities. What does this do? It promotes economic and social well-being, and it boosts job creation. That is why we say the budget is about economic expansion, economic strengthening, and the boosting of our opportunities to sustain and create jobs. So beyond the six billion you hear the minister announce, are these critical factors that are offshoot of this investment that affect communities and people directly. So this investment <clears throat> will also do a very critical thing. We have said that we want to encourage private investment into the sugar industry. But you can't do so with a dead asset. So we are also laying the foundation for serious discussions with the private sector as potential investors in this sector. <clears throat> and we want to see for us local interests, regional interests, and then international interests. So that is another important aspect. These investments would expand what sugar is, the industry itself. It would diversify the products that the industry generate. It will create more jobs, not only more jobs, but more jobs at the technical level. It will increase our production. It will expand our production. There will be more uh, need for private key and farmers, for example. So the investment in this sector, when you want to understand the impact, and you can't sit in an AC office or sit in a, in a particular confinement and believe that you understand the impact. Go to Canal and understand the impact that private cane farming has on the community. Go to Iflot. Go to Albion. Understand what the impact has. When you drive a major investor in the bauxite uh, industry out of production, like the AP and UAFC did, you create a vacuum. You impact the life of people negatively, and that is what took place in Linden. When the first PPCB government came, we had to fix it. And now we're in the process of fixing that again. So you have to understand how sectors work, how things work in the economy, how policies work to drive development. <clears throat> if, if we look at the rice sector now, for example, the investment and improved drainage and irrigation, the investment in research and development, the investment in value added and market expansion. What are these investments geared towards? <clears throat> you would have heard the Minister of Finance speaking about these investments. Drainage and irrigation, research and development. These investments are geared at achieving what we set, the targets, increasing productivity, <clears throat> reducing the cost of production, expanding and securing better paying markets. Now when you do this, when you increase productivity, when you improve market access and, 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 and so on, what happens? What happens? The farmers get more disposable income. There is more money when you reduce the cost of operation. There is greater profitability. When you improve in drainage and irrigation, you get greater yield. Less cost for transportation. 
which result in more disposable income available for those communities, more, in, more disposable income available for those families, <clears throat> making the industry more viable. So we have to understand how these things are linked. If every crop, crop increased the revenue generation for the farmers by $100,000, that is $100,000 more multiplied by the tens of thousands of farmers back in the economy, back in the communities, back in people's pocket. That is what the investment does. It catalyzes growth. It opens up opportunities. <clears throat> and that is why we are focusing on these things. Investment in farm to market access roads, opening up thousands of acres of land that will result in more Guyanese owning farmlands, increased investment and participation in the sector, making it easier for transportation and logistics linkages from field to production. <clears throat> All of this investment are critical investment for the sector, critical investment for our competitiveness, critical investment to increase production and revenue stream. Ultimately, who will benefit? Who will benefit? The farmers, the laborers, the transportation providers, the millers, the community in which these uh, opportunities are, more disposable income, and the economy and country as a whole. All of this ultimately benefits the entire society. That is a passed down effect. The pass on effect. When you look at retail trade, the better the sector do through investments and participation by the government in providing an enabling environment, the more disposable income is there to be spent in the retail sector. That is how economies are linked. That is how sectors are linked. And I wanted this morning to take this time so that we all can understand the linkages in the budget. It's not only about the, what we're doing for children and old age pensioners and health. These are the things that sometimes are overlooked. And I've looked at some commentators who don't have a clue or are deliberately, deliberately avoiding the reality of what the budget does. If you look at other crops, what are we trying to do with other crops? We are building public-private partnership and encouraging graduates and young entrepreneurs to look at agribusiness and food production as a viable future. And we are starting at the top and at the bottom. We are targeting university graduates graduates from the Guyana School of Agriculture. So when they come out of there, they're not only job searching, they're investment ready. And the government is going to support them. We're doing this by creating a new framework for traditional crops, enhancing traditional crops, but at the same time, investing in high value agriculture, <clears throat> using technology, research and development. This is the way forward. This is how we have to get accustomed. This is what we have to get accustomed to in the agribusiness framework. <clears throat> so we are expanding production in non-traditional crops such as corn, soya, coconut, broccoli, cauliflower, spices, specialized citruses, and fresh flowers. These are crops and these are aspects of the agribusiness that are high value, brings tremendous return, and help to expand our agribusiness portfolio. Diversifying and improving competitiveness expands our opportunities. 
These direct initiatives include the Youth Agriculture and Innovative Entrepreneur Project. It includes the allocation of land to hundreds of Guyanese, the completion of the Aichuni to Takama Road, opening up new areas, expanding market for coconut base and coconut production, new nurseries and expanded seedling production, shade house construction. And all of this is geared towards making the sector, again, as I said, more resilient, higher production, enhanced participation, and integrating agriculture as a main component of our economy. The agro-processing facilities that we will build across different regions, the abattoir, support to the livestock industry, are all critical investment to ramping up our production to meet the demands of the future. And this will be done in a way in which the hinterland and riverine communities will be critically involved in the food production process, ensuring food security at the community level, at the regional level, at the national level, and then building the capacity for production at the regional level. <clears throat> These are the investment that will catalyze the change. These are the investment that brings a new generation of Guyanese into agriculture. Because we can speak from now to God know it when about agriculture and food production. If we don't create the conditions and the framework to bring new entrants, to bring young people into the sector, then we will be wasting time. We'll be wasting investment. So these are the things that the, the sector is doing. When we talk about the fisher folk and the challenges they're having, <clears throat> in that because we don't, you don't control what happens in terms of catches. We are addressing that using technology, using the marine cage technology. We want to help to create a stable environment for production. We cannot grow the fishing and aquaculture industry if we don't have the infrastructure. If we don't have the infrastructure to create that environment. And this is a sector that employs tens of thousands of people. So this investment is about supporting the tens of thousands of persons who are employed in this sector, the tens of thousands of families who depend on this sector. That is how the budget is linked to you directly. That is how the budget affects your lives, your lives directly. So the technical, technological investment, the investment in infrastructure for the growth is critical in the, in, the, in the fishing and aquaculture industry. And what is this geared towards? This investment and direct support to the farmers is geared towards increasing our ability for prawn production, tilapia, shrimp, the marine cage that, that will be used <clears throat> both in freshwater uh, uh, rivers and also in the sea. Stepping up production, making the industry competitive and expanding participation. Letting people understand that we are creating the framework to support a viable industry. The question is again, <clears throat> who are the beneficiaries? It is the families of ordinary Guyanese who work in this sector, numbering thousands. When they are better off, the courts of today, the singers, the retail stores out there, the stores on Regent Street, New Amsterdam, Rosignol, Madia, Mabaruma, Letem, Parika, Anna Regina, you name the areas that are the areas of high retail. It is when these sectors do well and more disposable income is there that you also grow and do well. That is how what we do in these sectors are directly linked. And then <clears throat> we know there is an emerging added interest to our tourism product. That interest is an offshoot of what is happening in the oil and gas sector. And I promise you, I don't even have to speak about oil and gas at the moment. I will just stick on a few sectors to show you 
how outside of that, the budget impacts all of us as Guyanese directly. Sustainable tourism, an emerging area that now we can catalyze because an offshoot of oil and gas is the number of foreigners who are coming in, the new interest in our country. People are looking at Guyana. <clears throat> so not only are we working on new flights, but importantly, the training and development of Guyanese to work in this sector. The foundation has been laid for many new hotels that will require thousands of workers. Thousands of workers. <clears throat> in addition, specialized training as tour operators and travel agents are provided for in this budget. These are critical investments if we are to make this sector competitive. Who are going to benefit again? Thousands of Guyanese young people who will work in this sector. The indirect beneficiaries, the communities, <clears throat> the farmers <clears throat> who will have to scale up production to supply these new hotels, for example, resorts. And to support this, specific allocations are made <clears throat> to enhance brand Guyana, to promote brand Guyana, to market our tourism, targeting social media influencers, and targeting market representatives, all aimed at bringing more traffic to Guyana. The more people come, the more expenditures made. More of our diaspora come back, more spending in the, eco in the economy. If you have everyone coming in and spending 300 US dollars, just, just for an example, they spend far more than that, and you have 100,000 more visitors in a year, that is the impact it brings. 300 US multiplied by 100,000 is the catalytical effect more small businesses, small restaurants, the market, the fruit vendors, they benefit. That is why the 100 million endowment fund to help our cultural industry, bringing back the, 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 uh, the Literature Prize Award, bringing back uh, support to our artists. We promise this, enhancing the entertainment industry, building the talent of our local artists, giving them the tools to become regionally and globally competitive. This is the framework because we see tourism and the entertainment sector as an important ingredient in the future economic expansion and development of our country. And we have to support that nurturing. That is why we have that $100 million endowment fund. That was there before at a smaller scale on the, on the PP civic government but was removed after 2015. These specific initiatives that we are pursuing is to benefit who? It is to benefit you, the Guyanese people. We are, we are looking at specific initiatives like pursuing the CP, CPL finals, linking it to a regional carnival and Guyana festival. These are in, are in addition to our already rich cultural makeup that can form niche opportunities and open up thousands of income generating opportunities for Guyanas, Guyanese. This is what the budget does. It creates the environment and framework for this type of benefit to be integrated into the economy and the future development of our country. That is what the investment in tourism, that is when the ministers speak about the allocation to tourism, this is how it is linked to you directly. This is how it is linked to you directly. Information and communication technology, <clears throat> as is outlined in the manifesto, the ICT sector is a sector of the future. And we did not just put that in words, Budget 2022 creates the framework. It allows <clears throat> Guyana to understand what we are doing, how we are investing to make this a reality. <clears throat> so budget 2022, 
will continue the heavy investment and partnership with the private sector in supporting the creation of thousands of jobs, <clears throat> equipping communities across the country, especially the hinterland and rivering communities, with infrastructure and equipment necessary to bring them up to speed with the rest of the country. This is how it is linked to you. When young people and people in the hinterland have faster internet, access to the internet, it enhances their study opportunities. It enhances the opportunity to do business. <clears throat> it creates a faster and more efficient link with the rest of Guyana. It supports their livelihood. When we create hundreds of jobs in Linden, with private investors partnering with them, it creates hundreds of opportunities in Linden. Same we plan for Barbies, for Essequibo, for Region 5. This is how these investments are linked to you directly. These opportunities don't just come or spring out of the earth or rain down upon you. You have to create the enabling environment that will bring the benefit directly to the people across our country. And this is what Budget 2022 does. It, in the ICT sector, it improves services. It creates a framework for improved services, enhancing community and community life, and creating jobs, but importantly, importantly, <clears throat> bridging the gap. Technology is the fastest and most efficient way in which we can bridge the gap within communities and regions, especially our hinterland and riverine communities. That is why we are so strong on these investments. We want to support all these communities. We want to bring these communities more integrated into the mainstream of what we are doing. <clears throat> Look at small business support. Not only are we working on replenishing the Small Business Development Fund, but we're investing in partnering with business. We're investing in partnering with businesses, the ordinary small man out there, to access and be part of the many opportunities in the new economy. That is why we reached out to more than 100 young people who we are bringing in the agribusiness with partnership with the government. We are integrating our young people into corporations, consortiums, and partnership with an aim of creating a new generation of entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Not individual family wealth, but consortiums, corporations, bringing young people from all walk of life, all cross of, all, all cross cutting regions together, to work together, to build together. That brings with it the intangible benefit of creating the one Guyana, sharing experiences, integrating culture, working together, respecting each other, whilst at the same time creating economic empowerment. These are the attributes of Budget 2022 that you don't hear about from the commentators. But these are the integral intricacies of any developing society. These are necessary things if societies are to evolve and grow. And this is what we address in Budget 2022. But not only are we looking at training, training them and giving them the capital and the tools and the expertise and the equipment? But more importantly, we are pairing them with the market and business opportunities out there. So we are bringing more structure to the program. So my dear brothers and sisters, I'm spending this time this morning because I want all of us to be on the same page. I want all of us to have the same outlook, the positive outlook. I want us to understand where this country is going. I want us to understand how we are integrated with each other. 
I want us to understand what is important to us as a people. I want us to em understand how important it is for us, for us all to embrace an agenda that transform not only physical things, roads and parks and drains and buildings, but transform our thinking, transform the way we see each other, transform the way we relate to each other, transform the way we think of our country, transform the way we speak of our country. These are all necessary things for us as a nation. That is what makes us strong as a nation. That is what brings respect to us. We cannot lock ourselves away from the rest of the world. Some commentators saying foreign investors coming in. There was a time when our people migrated and built businesses and empires all over the world. We're not operating in a cocoon. We're operating in a global environment. We cannot lock ourselves away. But what we have to do is create an environment in which local or Guyanese are equipped and they, are be and they become competitive through the support of the government to make use of the opportunities and benefits too create an enabling environment for them. And that is what we are doing. So, if I may break this down further, to some of us who sometimes fall prey to the propaganda that we are an island unto ourselves, think about if you had some, some relatives overseas in the hard, hard times of Ghana who were sending back money for you, making that money in another economy, and supporting you through remittance. That is because leaders who are serious, countries who are serious, and people who are serious understand we operate in a global environment. And whatever we do has to be in context of that global environment. The time will come this budget create the environment for it. When the remaining oil blocks will be out there for public tender, let us see those same commentators if they will bring a, a consortium and put a tender in. It will be open. It will be open. But even then, it would not be good enough. Even then, it will not be good enough. No doubt, this is our greatest opportunity for the transformation of this country. And I want to look at the energy sector. And the energy sector is not only going to be transferred for energy security, but for creating an energy platform that will bring the jobs of the future. Let us understand this. When we speak about Amylus Falls Hydro, the natural, power, natural gas power plant, the investment in the agricultural sector is about jobs. Ultimately, it is about jobs, the creation of wealth, revenue, and more disposable income for the people of this country. Because when the energy investments are made <clears throat> and the cost of energy come down, the operational costs for manufacturing, industrial development, and agro-processing are key components for our competitiveness. And these costs will come down. Not only will you see a reduction of 50% in your electricity bill, but when the production costs come down for the manufacturing of nails, zinc, ultimately the price of the product will come down. But much more than this, the environment is created to diversify our economy with catalytical investment in manufacturing, agro-processing, and industrial development. That is what energy security brings. 
That is what competitive energy prices brings. It makes Guyana as a country a more competitive destination for investment in every area. Imagine what our own fertilizer plant will do for the agriculture sector. This is how the budget and the energy sector and the natural gas plant and the hydro is linked to all of us. Just imagine what the fertilizer plant will do for the agricultural sector. Imagine what our own agrochemical plant will do. Imagine what our own LNG plant will do. Imagine what a reduction of 50% in your electricity cost will do for you. Imagine how it will enhance your life, more disposable income. Imagine how many jobs will be created during and after construction of our hydro and natural gas energy facilities. Imagine what our new shorelines will look like. Well, my friends, 2022 brings that imagination. Budget 2022 brings that imagination to life. You don't have to imagine it anymore. This budget brings it to life. As the seeds are now planted to realize all of this. Not only is the focus on the big transformative facilities, but investments are also made in small hydropower plants and off-grid solar systems. And these are especially earmarked for the hinterland and riverine communities. Imagine 30,000 more households in the hinterland and riverine areas having access to energy, to power, to solar power. Those who are writing from the little cocoon in their AC offices cannot imagine this. But this is how budget 2022 affects the lives of people directly. Affect the life and communities directly. This is how it is linked to the people directly. That is why it is a people-centered budget. This is the power of budget 2022. This is the power that budget 2022 gives to the people. This is the energy that budget 2022 brings to the country and its people. This is how it is linked to you, my brothers and sisters. This is how it is linked to you, fellow Guyanese. This is how you can relate to budget 2022. We hear about the bridges from Kurupukari to Lethem. One, about safety. Two, the state of the bridges in rainy season. Three, the impassable nature. And four, the standards. Well, Budget 2022 addresses this. As we seek to bridge communities and bring people together more efficiently and less costly, we're investing in a series of bridges all across Guyana. Bridges to international standard from Kurupukari to Letep. And the thousands of hours we lose every day in traffic because of congestion at the Demerara Harbor Bridge are all addressed in Budget 2022. Yes, the new Demerara Harbor Bridge will start this year. This is what Budget 2022 means. Making life easier, safer, removing burdens, eliminating stress, and enhancing the journey of life. So when you sit in your office penning letters, understand what it means for those persons who lose thousands of man hours, those families who lose thousands of man hours annually because of the congestions of that, congestion of that bridge. Understand what it means for business, for school children, because this is how the budget is linked to the people directly. Understand what a diversified investment in Region 10, Region 6, Region 5, Region 2, what it means to those people in sustainable livelihood. 
have an appreciation for it. Because this is how the budget impacts the ordinary people. Not by false pens inking negative propaganda to achieve narrow self-serving goals. No. By hardcore, structural, targeted policies and programs that enhance the life of people, life of Guyanese. The hundreds of thousands of persons who will benefit from new highway roads and bridges, bridges reduce, that will reduce travel time, wear and tear on vehicles, are the ones who will understand how this budget touches their lives. And they are the ones that budget 2022 is designed to help. <clears throat> so I ask everyone to contextualize and understand what this budget is about. We have made our plans for health care known. We are clear in what we want to achieve in health care. <clears throat> we have made very clear that our goal is to bring first class health care service to all the people of our country. All the people of our country. That is why we're investing more than $73.2 billion dollars in infrastructure, the restoration of existing facilities, expansion of regional health, regional hospitals, and altogether new facilities. All of this will be the catalyst in achieving the first class health care we want to deliver. More importantly is the fact that budget 2022 <clears throat> sets out investment <clears throat> to train our doctors in specialized in areas, whilst at the same time, expand educational facilities and opportunities for new doctors, technicians, nurses, and other technical officials to manage this industry. Because whilst we build modern infrastructure, <clears throat> whilst the private sector will be investing in new state-of-the-art infrastructure, we also have to invest in the human resources. The state-of-the-art pediatric and maternal hospital will be second to none. And this will be built to bring direct benefits and direct gains to the people not only of Guyana, but it is built to support regional, to support regional interests. It is built to support our diaspora Making Guyana a health hub or a health destination. That is what the private sector is doing because of the policies we are implementing. Major investment in first class facilities from the private sector. Not only in traditional areas, but in plastic surgery. Creating the environment for investment in stem cell manufacturing facilities, you will see how all of this will emerge as a result of the policies and programs that we are pursuing over these five years and particularly in this budget. You will see that. Who will benefit? Who will benefit? The entire country. Who makes up the country? All the people that lives here and all the people that will come in to be part of what we are doing. This is how budget 2022 speaks to the needs of all the people of our country. The added investment in housing and water. What, it will, it, what will it do? It will create opportunities for more than 10,000 families to own their own homes. It will support low-income families. But much more than this, much, much more than this, we don't sometimes understand this. This investment will create tens of thousands of jobs directly and indirectly. Think about this sector requiring more than 150,000 truckloads of sand for the infrastructure work alone, not for the houses. 
just to implement the infrastructure work alone, it will require 150,000 truckloads of sand. Think about the thousands of skilled and unskilled workers, drivers, mechanics, engineers that will be required. Think about this for a moment before you write about whether the budget is people-centered and people-oriented. Who are going to benefit? It is these people. And they understand how this budget is linked to them. This is how budget 2022 brings direct benefit to the people of this country. And the same can be said for every single sector, including the thousands of Guyanese that will benefit from the Gold Scholarship Program. Yes, not forgetting too that we are working towards achieving 98% coverage of treated, 98% uh, of the population along the coastline having access to treated water. Budget 2022 set the framework for that. It set the framework for the investment in riverine and hinterland community to make water more accessible, healthier. This is what it means to people in those communities. The more than 3.5 billion to the University of Guyana to support students and faculty there, who are going to benefit? It is the Guyanese who are studying there, who are working there. It is their families by extension. The 2.5 billion that will be spent to strengthen technical and vocational education are some, some examples of how budget 2022 will be used to create the human resources that the country needs. You don't hear about this from some of the commentators. But this, these are all in budget 2022. The Guyana Technical Training College that we're developing in Port Morant, that used to be formerly the Port Morant Training Institute, will provide the country with thousands of Guyanese to meet the future job requirement whether in the field of oil and gas, hospitality, machining, or other technical areas. We are building the infrastructure to create the environment that they will be trained, and more importantly, linked to the jobs of the future, the jobs that the economy requires. And that is what Budget 2022 allows. As promised in the manifesto, all of this was promised, the expanded water treatment. The investment that would take us to 98% treated water coverage along the coast. But importantly, it will accelerate investment in the hinterland and riverine areas, establishing wells and extending water supplies. <clears throat> Our hinterland communities will also benefit from accelerated land tightening program, expansion of food production, provision of an additional 71 tractors to support livelihood, investment in road linkages, the addition of 500 new CSOs, bringing the jobs created directly to 2,500. The Hinterland Scholarship Program will be expanded from the already more than 100,000 students studying. This is how the budget relates to people directly of all walk of, walk of life, of all communities, of all social strata. These are only but a few highlights in budget 2022 and how it impacts people directly. I have not spoken about investment in Toraparu that will open up new areas for mining. I have not spoken about the direct support to, import, to, to important linkages for the mining sector, the road infrastructure, the policy framework. I have not spoken about the support for investment in quarrying that would open up thousands of new jobs, thousands of new jobs. I have not spoken about the three large-scale concessions that will going to look at. I have not spoken about the 50 large, uh, new large concessions in the forestry sector that will be restructured for medium and small size uh, uh, 
um, investors. I have not spoken about the more than 1,000 prefab houses that will be manufactured and the benefit that will, be, that will bring and how it's integrated into the economy. I have not spoken about the opportunities of all this and what it will bring for saw millers, the manufacturing industry, the furniture industry, community forest organization, and the thousands of stakeholders that benefit from the sector, all of which was dead prior to August 2nd, 2020. All of this now has renewed life. Budget 2022 restores all those jobs, expands opportunity, and enhances livelihood. Outside of this, the minister has already detailed the specific measures that will bring parity in tax treatment for local content. Yes, it was not only about passing a local content bill, it is making the bill alive now. I'm not even telling you about the 10%, the removal of, removal of the 10% excise tax and the 14% VAT on new motor trucks less than four years old. I have not spoken about the removal of the 14% VAT on new haulers and the benefit this will bring and the opportunities it will bring. The removal, in some cases, reduction in excise tax for double cap pickups less than 1,500 cc. The removal of uh, single cap, the taxes on single cap pickups and double cap pick pickups below 3,000 cc. I have not spoken about the removal of the advanced tax on resident contractors making more than $2 billion in cash flow available to local contractors, the impact that would have on small contractors, the impact that would have on Guyanese and how it helped them. I'm not speaking on the extended freight cost adjustment that would negate the passing on of over $6 billion to the consumer. I'm not even addressing those. The reduced cost of fuel, supporting dialysis patients, the bulk allocation for specific cost of living initiative, the increase in old age pension, public assistance, uniform grants for school children, increase, increase in the Because We Care grant, incentivizing the savings in the banking sector, reducing the cost, of life, uh, the cost for life and medical insurance, increasing disposable income by moving the income tax threshold, thereby releasing billions directly back to the pockets of the people. Supporting homeowners by increasing the mortgage loan ceiling. In 2020 and 2021, more than one billion of savings to the taxpayers was released in the mortgage relief program. That is one billion that went back to the people directly as a result of our initiatives. The removal of the stamp duties on retail transactions and reverting to pre-2015 status quo treatment for remigrants. This is how a government takes care of the needs of the people. And I'm not even going through these. You've heard a lot about these. But I try to bring the other areas into focus. So my dear Guyanese brothers and sisters, I just wanted us all to have a great appreciation as to how this budget is related to our day-to-day -day life how this budget is related to our communities, how this budget is related to our country, the development, the forward trajectory, where we want to take it. It is in our hands as a people. It is in our hands to unite. It is in our hands to be positive. It is in our hands to build this one Guyana. That budget 2022 cannot do by itself. Budget 2022 cannot change the way we think about ourselves, our fellow Guyanese brothers and sisters, our communities, and our country. That is what you have to do. Budget 2022 gives us the tools in making it happen. It is now up to us to ensure it happens. May God bless all of you continue to be safe. Thank you very much.